Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to share with you the topic chemical reactions in the O-level chemistry syllabus. Let's first look at physical and chemical changes. A physical change do not produce any new chemical substances. These changes are often easy to reverse, making a mixture from two or more substances or dissolving a solute in a solvent are examples of physical changes as no new substances are produced and are usually relatively easy to separate. Chemical change. During chemical changes, usually referred to as chemical reactions, new chemical substances are formed that have very different properties to the reactants. There may be signs that a new substance has formed, such as a color change, a precipitate formation, gas formation, etc. Most chemical reactions are very difficult to reverse. What do you mean by rate of a reaction? For that, at first you have to look at collision theory. For a chemical reaction to occur, the reactant particles must collide with each other. However, a collision with too little energy will not produce a reaction. The colliding particles must have enough kinetic energy for the collision to be successful or effective in producing a reaction. The minimum amount of energy for a collision to be successful is called the activation energy. The rate of a reaction depends on the rate of successful collisions between reactant particles. The more successful collisions there are, the faster the rate of reaction. The factors that affect the rate of reaction are changing the surface area of solids, changing concentration of solutions, changing the temperature, changing the pressure of gases, adding or removing a catalyst, including enzymes. So this is showing that a chemical reaction is fastest at the start. It slows down as the reactants are used up. The surface area of solid reactants. Where one or more of the reactants is a solid, the more finely powdered or finely divided the solids are, the greater is the rate of the reaction. A solid has a much larger surface area when it is powdered than when it is in larger pieces. If a solid is being reacted with a liquid or solution, the greater the surface area, the more the solid is exposed to the liquid and greater is the rate of reaction. For example, the reaction between limestone or marble chips and dilute hydrochloric acid. Calcium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid gives calcium chloride plus water plus carbon dioxide. This is the apparatus for the reaction of marble chips with dilute hydrochloric acid. The loss of carbon dioxide from the flask produces a loss in mass. This is detected by the balance. We can compare two samples of marble chips, one sample being in smaller pieces than the other. The experiment is carried out twice, once with sample A and once with sample B. We can compare two samples of marble chips, one sample being in smaller pieces than the other. The experiment is carried out twice, once with sample A and once with sample B. In each of the experiment, the mass of sample used is the same. Same volume, same concentration of hydrochloric acid is used. The flask sits on the balance during the reaction. A loose cotton wool plug prevents liquid spraying out of the flask but allows the carbon dioxide gas to escape into the air. This means that the flask will lose mass during the reaction. Balance readings are taken at regular time intervals and the loss in mass can be worked out. When the loss in mass is plotted against time, curves such as those in the figure below are obtained. The graph shows the loss in mass against time for experiments A and B. The reaction is faster if the marble chips are broken into smaller pieces which is shown, shown as curve B. The reaction is fastest at the start. This is shown by the steepness of the curves over the first few minutes. Curve B is steeper than curve A. This means that gas is being produced faster with sample B. The sample with smaller chips with a greater surface area reacts faster. Beyond this part of the graph, both reaction slows down as the reactants are used up.
The total volume of gas released is the same in both experiments. The mass of calcium carbonate and the amount of acid are same in both cases. Both curves flatten out at the same final volume. Sample B reaches the horizontal part of the curve first. The second factor is the concentration of reactants. The rate or speed of a reaction increases when the concentration of a reactant in solution is increased. Reactions that produce gases are also very useful in studying the effect of solution concentration on the reaction rate. Example, the reaction between magnesium and excess dilute hydrochloric acid. Magnesium plus hydrochloric acid gives magnesium chloride plus hydrogen. And this is the apparatus for the reaction of magnesium with dilute hydrochloric acid. The hydrogen gas given off can be collected and measured in a gas syringe. We will compare two different experiments which we call C and D. The acid in experiment C is twice as concentrated as in experiment D. Apart from changing the concentration of the acid, everything else must stay the same. So the volume of acid, the temperature and the mass of magnesium used must be the same in both experiments. The gas produced in this reaction is hydrogen and is collected in a gas syringe. The volume of gas produced is measured at frequent time intervals. We can then plot a graph of volume of gas collected against time. This graph shows the volume of hydrogen against time for experiment C and D. The reaction is faster if the acid solution is more concentrated, which is shown as curve C. The curve for experiment C is steeper than for D. This shows clearly that reaction C is using more concentrated acid and is faster than reaction D. The curve for experiment C starts off twice as steeply as for D. This means that the reaction in C is twice as fast as in experiment D initially. So doubling the concentration of the acid doubles the rate of reaction. The total volume of hydrogen produced is the same in both experiments. Both reactions produce the same volume of hydrogen, although experiment C produces it faster. Next factor is temperature. The rate of a reaction increases when the temperature of the reaction mixture is increased. Example, the reaction between sodium thiosulfate and hydrochloric acid. In this case, the formation of a precipitate is used to measure the rate of reaction. Sodium thiosulfate plus hydrochloric acid gives sodium chloride plus sulfur plus sulfur dioxide and water. The experiment is shown in the figure. A cross is marked on a piece of paper. A flask containing sodium thiosulfate solution is placed on top of the paper. Hydrochloric acid is added quickly. The yellow precipitate of sulfur produced is very fine and stays suspended in the liquid. With time, as more and more sulfur is formed, the liquid becomes cloudier and more difficult to see through. The time taken for the cross to dis disappear is measured. The faster the reaction, the shorter the length of time during which the cross is visible. The experiment is carried out several times with solutions pre-warmed to different temperatures. The solutions and conditions of the experiment must remain the same. Only the temperature is altered. A graph can then be plotted of the time taken for the cross to disappear against temperature like that shown in the figure. As you can see, as temperature is increased, the time taken for the cross to disappear is shortened. The reaction speeds up at high temperature. The graph shows two important points. The cross disappears more quickly at higher temperatures. The shorter the time needed for the cross to disappear, the faster the reaction. The curve is not a straight line. Rate of reaction is inversely proportional to time. The next factor is pressure. The increase in pressure results in the gas particles being pushed closer together, increasing the number of particles per unit volume. 
This means that they collide more frequently and so the rate of reaction increases. Changing the pressure on a reaction which involves only solids or liquids has no effect on the rate. Example, in the manufacture of ammonia by Haber's process, the rate of reaction between hydrogen and the nitrogen is increased by the use of very high pressures. This is a reaction, nitrogen plus hydrogen giving ammonia. The next factor is catalyst. A catalyst is a substance which can alter the rate of a reaction and is unchanged at the end of the reaction. The catalyst will provide an alternative pathway requiring lower activation energy, so more colliding particles will have the necessary activation energy to react. This will allow more frequent and successful collisions, increasing the rate of reaction. And this is an energy profile diagram which shows the difference of activation energy with catalyst and without catalyst. Example, decomposition of hydrogen peroxide using the catalyst manganese for oxide. Hydrogen peroxide decomposes to form water and oxygen. The decomposition is very slow at room temperature and it can be speeded up by adding a catalyst manganese 4 oxide. The catalyst is unchanged at the end and can be separated from the water by filtration. These are some of the common examples of catalysts. Decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, manganese 4 oxide, MnO2, nitration of benzene, concentrated sulfuric acid, manufacture of ammonia by the Haber process, iron, conversion of SO2 into SO3 during the contact process to make sulfuric acid, vanadium 5 oxide, V2O5, hydrogenation of a carbon, double bond carbon, catalyst used is nickel. What are biological catalysts or enzymes? Living cells also produce catalysts. They are protein molecules called enzymes. The general features of enzymes are proteins. They are very specific. Each enzyme controls one reaction. They are generally temperature sensitive. They are inactivated or denatured by heat. Most stop working above 45 degrees Celsius. They are sensitive to pH. Most enzymes work best in neutral conditions around pH 7. That's all. Thank you so much for watching my video.